Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about the potential for a snow system, a uh, winter storm, snowstorm, okay, uh, early next week. Now this storm is going to be an interesting one. Relatively uh, similar track to what the other storms have taken uh, this year. But it's going to have a few uh, interesting uh, features associated with it that are going to be different compared to the other storms. So we'll I'll talk about that in today's video, maybe a little bit about the pattern as well, what's to come for this weekend, for the Super Bowl weekend. So stay tuned, uh, please consider subscribing to this channel if you um, are new, uh, you know, obviously go check this uh, my channel out before you do so, see if it's worthy of a subscription. Also, uh, if you are a uh, consistent viewer and you like viewing these videos, please, please consider liking the video as that really helps out a lot. And, uh, again, that's what probably make, this is the best thing you could do. So right now we're looking at the GFS total snowfall, and I just wanted to show you this. Obviously, these amounts are pretty high for some locations. This is not going to most likely happen uh, in the same way that it's showing, but I'm just showing you that the potential for uh, for some big snows is still possible. People are, are talking like if winter is over, but it doesn't seem like if it is. Uh, it seems like we still have good two months at least. I mean, we're basically, let's just start from uh, February 1st and February 1st to March 1st a month. I would say at least two months, two and a half months. Um, there was a couple years ago, Green Bay, Wisconsin got uh, 24 inches. It was a big event. Don't know, know the exact number and it was in, I think, mid to late April. So those snowstorms still occur and they could actually be even more powerful in the late springtime. Notice that right now we're looking at some energy from the southern gulf bring a little bit of uh, moisture into the northern piece of this energy into the US that delivers a little bit of snow showers uh, some energy being diverted up to the north this doesn't really do much earlier those thought of a maybe nor'easter across the northeast coast doesn't seem like that will do much we get a ridging pattern for a quick day really just mainly Sunday and into Monday you could see uh, that the temperatures rise uh, well above average um, they have been already above average but now they rise even more so and you can see pockets of 50s and 60s as far north as Illinois now you can see that the models have a locked in 30 degrees over here that is because of the snow cover there's snow cover across these locations maybe a bit overdone by the models but you can see that that's why there's like that sharp gradient of uh, chill and that's why the temperatures aren't reaching that you can see Kansas City possibly up to 60 northern Kansas mainly in the 30s so there's a quite a sharp gradient with that and let's just go through this this ridge that's occurring will actually lead to the snowstorm and you can see that this wherever this uh, how I guess far this ridge goes to the south and how far south uh, this uh, jet stream uh, delivers its punch is where the storm will ride along and that determines the track of it notice that it's a it's a classical west to east uh, track. It's not really a panhandle low that takes a that develops across the panhandles and swoops across the country, uh, delivering lots of snow across the northwest regions. It's not a uh, just a plain west to east. I should specify it's not just moving across like that, delivering snow across the northern side. It's really uh, it's combination of both is the best to be said. It uh, it develops across the Colorado, uh, I guess, lower elevations, the front range of the Rockies, and this uh, initially starts off uh, flat, but it slowly takes a track up to the north, and it really, again, delivers the heaviest snow um, north of the coastal areas of the northeast, not really the coastal areas. So let's take a look at this hour 108. Let's put this into motion. Notice we see this breaking out across uh, late Monday, really late Monday, early Tuesday. We see some snow across the plain, some icing. But I want to emphasize that uh, this storm will be actually pretty darn uh, powerful across the mountains. So Denver, the Colorado, Rockies, parts of Wyoming, the uh, Grand Tetons, Yellowstone, and into the Great Salt Lake. You can see there's going to be quite a bit of snow with that. Then the, all this energy transfers into this uh, building uh, precipitation shield across the central U.S. And this really delivers a broad swath of light to moderate snow. Nothing really heavy, it seems. Um, it's not going to have too much support out of the Gulf of Mexico. And even if it were um, to have a lot of support, it's just not that strong 
to drag that moisture up and you can see that it passes through gets quite a bit of heavy rain in here and uh, just it doesn't seem too impressive on the northern snowy side of this but uh, definitely a few inches will still be falling and you can see there's could be several waves to this system one uh, initial one push right here the European shows that in a little better fashion the several waves which one will be more right that's tough to say the European had a pretty consistent handle on it however the GFS definitely has not been doing a bad job either you can see there's one push there's a second main push and there could be even a third one across the Texas Plains girl which we'll see if that holds true but you could see that and the Northeast may get in on some of this and even parts of the coastal areas right here getting on some of this with that uh, push from Texas then we see a pretty large storm with the G which the GFS puts out you can see right there um, this could affect uh, quite a bit of the Northeast next Friday next weekend which we'll have to wait and see um, if the if you know the exact orientation but the European actually shows a pretty similar feature just a little bit more west to east than what the GFS shows. The GFS is more north to south. You can see that the low tracks basically right along the east coast. So not, you know, directly north to south, but a southwest to a northeast orientation a storm. And you can see that that basically drops a lot of snow across the northeast. So we'll have to keep an eye on for that. And then more snow potential out in the future. Um, that's not going to really stop. But let's focus on this first system. And see how much snow could fall. Uh, total snowfall accumulations. You can see the GFS doesn't really put out much at all. Um, it It's there. I mean, if this were to fall over a course of a relatively short manner, that would be pretty impactful. Though this won't really fall in a burst. It will fall in a relatively uh, appropriate manner for a snowstorm or for a winter storm within 24 to 36 hours. However, you know, 7, 6 inches, that's probably the max. Uh, maybe a little bit more in some locations. That doesn't seem like it will be uh, any any anything close to record. Let's look at let's see. Uh, uh, let's look at a CMC, the Canadian model. You can see Canadian puts out a little bit different amounts of snow for these locations. However, um, it's again a little bit different orientation. It's more of a north to south. And if you recall, that's what the uh, what, that's what the Canadian has been doing for the past couple of days. It's been showing more of a north to south orientation versus a uh, west to east what the other models are showing that's why I just kind of disregard this model but notice it doesn't really show much of an impressive Tuesday Wednesday storm but really shows that a second system that the GFS and European have over the Northeast the Canadian shows it over the Midwest it has an extreme westward uh, uh, I guess bias towards the storm and whether that's wrong or right I would have to say that it's more uh, I guess leaning away from the truth and what the other models are you can see that would be pretty impractical for the uh, for the midwest um with, in terms of snow but the snowfall amounts would be impressive as the north to south system usually do drop north to south systems usually drop quite a bit of snow except again uh the european and gfs don't really agree in that agree on that and the european and gfs when they agree on one thing uh, they're the two biggest models. When they agree on one thing and a model, a different model say something else, usually that model that says something else is not going to be right. As the GFS and Canadian are uh, the strongest models in the weather industry and uh, they're most widely respected. We will get into this high resolution models as we go on within its reach, maybe 84 hours, 40 hours, but that's still too far out. We have to focus on this Tuesday, Wednesday storm, which the high resolution models should start focusing in on. Uh, the NAM, the North American model, should start focusing in on Saturday, uh, early Saturday, and then the high resolutions maybe late Sunday, early Monday. So we won't get a better grip of that until then, really. The, I would, you know, many since yesterday's video, I would say that there hasn't been much more confidence that shot up at all. There's just been more uh, kind of d displacement in the track, the timing, so it just leaves us with the same uh, low confidence. You can see the, um, the European also takes that track north to south, but at the same time west to east, so mainly a light northeastward, uh, northeastward track, though it's not a panhandle low. And I'll show you the snowfall amounts for the European in uh in just a bit so let's look at the surface and precipitation map of the european model using pivotal weather again the pivotal weather has a free high resolution european model which is very nice and we are utilizing this right now notice it has that uh energy across the midwest for uh, friday and saturday 
and this is not really anything too impressive, not going to do much more than an inch or two. But again, has that nor uh, northeast system off to the west or to the east. Again, I was saying that this was not going to move towards the east for quite a while, and that seems to be the case. Uh, notice that we are looking at a, again, that pretty powerful system in the mountains for the weekend, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, late weekend, early next week, and then we see that system spill on into the Midwest. Now, this is where the European and GFS disagree. You can see the European puts out a wave right there, uh, kind of a first wave, a second wave right there, very disorganized, and a third wave across the Texas uh, plains, which then later moves on into the Northeast with which uh, with quite a bit of moisture into the Northeast. You could see uh, with heavy snow as well, with the, which the GFS and European agree on which doesn't happen too often. Let's look at the total accumulated snowfall. Uh, so again, a little bit of light snow up until then, maybe an inch, maybe two inches in some locations uh, where this heaviest snow sets up. You can see Pennsylvania, maybe up to three. Uh, mountain snow across British Columbia, still getting lots and lots of snow, just absolutely getting pounded with 40 plus inches of snow. And that will continue. You can see uh, the mountains not getting record amounts of snow, but they're de it's definitely, you know, uh, I guess, respectable 9 10 inches of snow across the higher elevations lower elevations maybe denver seeing three to five notice the european doesn't put out too much across this location maybe six seven right across the chicagoland area two three iowa maybe five up to half a foot across nebraska and maybe into detroit michigan maybe a little bit north of there you can see it puts out though quite a bit across the northeast with that second wave uh maybe up to two uh, or a foot and a half at, at most but uh, that's respectable. Now, let's look at British Columbia snowfall amounts. I just love always looking over this, just looking at the very heavy snowfall amounts that are going to be falling. You can see some locations well over um, 80 inches, many feet of five, five, six feet of snow, which is just... Uh, which are just really, really strong amounts. So, uh, everybody... Thank you for so much for watching. Consider liking this video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And that's about it for today. So, see you guys in the next episode.